Hello and welcome to the Marine Channel. Thanks very much for joining me. I'm down here at Swanwick Marina on the south coast of England on a beautiful early spring day. I'm about to show you a boat that could be your solution to getting on the water in 2023. Let's go and have a look. And here she is. This is the Axapar 22. It's the smallest Axapar in the range. It's the newest model in the range. It's been out barely two years. <clears throat> and it's Axapar's way of uh, encouraging more people on the water. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about Axapar. Axapar was formed in 2014. It's a Finnish company. And basically their mission was, as I said, to get people out on the water. They termed themselves the Adventure Company. And it's worked because since that time, they've sold a little bit over three and a half thousand boats. They've got a hundred retailers around the world in 40 different countries and about just under half of their total global production goes to North America. So they really are a global brand. Now the first model they brought out was the 28. That did incredibly well, not least because of its funky styling. We'll talk about that in a moment or two. And the range now has a 25, a 37, a 28, and this, the 22, which is the baby, the most accessible version. But the good thing about these Axapars is that all the learnings they've got from the larger models, they've applied to this one. So it really is a cracking boat. Now, let's talk a little bit about styling here. Quite a radical style when this boat came out. It's been copied by other manufacturers since, but actually Axapar don't mind that. They're kind of sort of quite flattered by the fact that other people think it's good. What you've got is this very upright bow, almost like a wave piercing bow. And then quite a slender hull with this sort of flaring here that manages all the spray. But the really trick thing, <clears throat> when we move back along, is these tunnels here. Every Axapar has two of these, these kind of scoops, if you like. And what they do is they direct air underneath the hull, and that kind of forms a cushion between the hull and the water, and it reduces friction. It also enhances the way this boat handles. But it means that this boat with a 200 horsepower Mercury engine on the back does about 45 knots, so it's quick and it's economical. Now there is the option to go for a 115 horsepower Mercury on this. Talking to the guys here, that's not an option they ever really see taken because the 200 just has that little bit more grunt. But importantly, when you come to sell the boat, you'll probably get most of the money you spent on the engine upgrade back. That's what they're certainly finding with the other models in the range. Um, and just around the back here, you can see got a nice bathing ladder, all integrated. That will obviously lift up, push in, and then stow away Ooh, safely like that. And this particular one, it's got this Revolve pack on it. I'll put some details about what that includes, but basically it's kind of a turnkey solution. So if you're new to boating and you want things like a you know, stand-up paddle board and some other toys and so forth, that comes as part of this pack. So again, it's a, it's a great way for newbies into boating to be able to uh, really experience uh, the fun they can have. Okay, so we've had a little look on the, uh, the hull. Great that it's out of the water because you can really see those bits and pieces. And then uh, let's climb on board and see what we can find. So welcome aboard the Axapar 22. Now, let's have a look at the seating configuration. So this has got probably the most popular option, which is this kind of U-shaped bench. There are other options. You can have a bench that runs, I believe, left to right. But this one accommodates the most number of people, six people. You can see underneath the benches there, there's a little bit of storage, which is, uh, which is all good. They're open, so that's ideal for things like, you know, wetsuits, life jackets, stuff that you might want to access easily when you're out and about. And then under this rear seat, there's a little bit more storage again. Well, actually quite a lot of storage. It's pretty good in there. And then under floor, we have quite a big lazarette here. There's also a place to put a table and you can have some infill cushions and make this whole area into a big sun pad. But comfortably seating six people. What's quite nice as well, I've got to say, having got on board one of these 
whilst in the marina. These big areas at the back, very easy to step onto, very grippy as well. This has got an optional, an upgrade in terms of the, uh, the deck material. I'll put a link below to that. But it's amazing how stable this boat is. You know, quite often when you get into sort of 20, 25 footer, you step on and the whole boat kind of rocks, particularly if you're my size. But this is very, very stable. And down here, we've also got a little transom shaft, which is a nice touch. So good seating there. I'm going to swing the camera around, see the helm position. And what I've actually done here as well is turn the helm seat round the other way. Both these seats will turn round. And then you can imagine back here with a the table there, a really sociable place for probably up to eight people to be able to sit and dine and chat at anchor. I'll leave that chair there and just show you the helm itself. This one's got the 12 inch Simrad screen, which is an optional upgrade. <clears throat> the minimum you'd want with this is the, the right hand screen, this one, which is your uh, engine sort of telematics. You don't need to go for a big 12 inch, you go for a nine inch as well. Depends what you're gonna use the boat for really. But nice helm position. And I think what's really clever is that they've put the throttle control in the middle. And the reason I think that's a good idea is if you've got anybody on board that wants to helm that's a little bit inexperienced or maybe you wanna give your kids a, a try, let them uh, you know, have a buzz around the bay, they can sit uh, behind the wheel and do all that. And then mum or dad can sit on this side and just have easy reach of the throttle should they need it. So I think that's a really clever idea. Um, both the seats have got these lifting bolsters so you can, uh, you can drive the boat with them down or you can raise them up and then put your feet on there. And I think a really clever feature on this boat, you've got this screen here, this Perspex screen, which is really, really good in terms of wind protection. But if you're stood up and you're really cracking on, bear in mind this boat can do up to about 40 knots, what you've got on the side here is just a couple of very simple adjusters that when you loosen them off, you can then raise this screen practically vertically. Just tighten that off when it's in position. And now you've got weather protection when you're cracking along stood up. There's also these kind of little I don't know what you describe them as sort of wings here, one either side. Now these are fixed, but again, what it does is it manages the airflow and the spray down the side. So actually, when you're cracking along, sat here, despite the fact it's an open boat, you've got very, very good protection always round. I think that's a brilliant idea. Very, very clever indeed. So let's move along the side. This handrail goes all the way along the side. I really like this sort of black anodized aluminium look. Looks quite sort of hench. Fits in with the style of the boat. And then at the front here, again, this is an option. Got a couple of, well, space for a couple of people. You've got the table. That table will lift out and you can then put that uh, aft for dining and so forth. Just move around here. So anchor locker here. Now, because it's a relatively small light boat, you don't need an electric windlass. So you can see in there just about anyway. There's an anchor, there's some chain, there's some ropes, and then covers and bits and pieces. All stowed away quite nicely. Again, the idea with this boat is to kind of keep it simple. That doesn't mean the build quality is not good, quite the opposite. The build quality on this boat is every bit as good as the larger, more expensive brothers and sisters, if you like, in the range. They get all the benefit of that. But by producing quite large numbers and keeping the design simple, they've kept the price down. The price on these are extremely good. Now, one more little party trick. At the front here, lift that up, just clears the table nicely, and we have a loo. Well, in fact, we have proper little heads. So in here, we've got, uh, this one's electric. You can have a manual pump out or electric, depends what you want. A little sink there as well. A little bit of space for storage and so forth. But suddenly it transforms this boat from just being one you go out for maybe two or three hours into one that you can genuinely go out for the day. And you can shut this down. You can see here this sort of opaque panel. So if you are using the conveniences, you can shut that down. No one will see what's going on, but you have got a little bit of light. Very clever. 
and all in a boat that's barely, well, 8.15 metres. Very clever indeed. So, what do we end up with? Seating for about eight, maybe even ten. This great T-top up here, which actually is a retrofit. This, this boat left the factory as a spider. Spider is the, is the open version, completely open. So this started life as a spider and has ended up as a T-top, which proves you can retrofit it. Most of, the, uh, most of the boats that go out in sort of northern Europe tend to have this fitted from factory. You've got this sort of canvas panel in the middle. That is fixed. But again, that just reduces weight and complexity and cost. And it works really, really well. I think it looks really, really good. So there you go. The Axapar 22 from the Adventure Company as Axapar have branded themselves. I think it's a cracking little boat. I think it looks good. It's a huge amount of fun to uh, drive. And um, yeah, if you want to get into boating, I can think of fewer, better ways to do that. Huge thanks to the team down here. I'm going to put links into everybody in the description below. But thank you to the team from Axapar and Sunseeker for letting us on board. This is actually a physical boat. This is available for sale. I can't imagine it will stay on the market for very long. But if you talk to the team down here, they'll give you some details and you could be on the water in this very boat for 2023. And if you are, do please let us know. We'd like some photos. Anyway, listen, from me at the Marine Channel, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tour. If you like the video, like it, share it, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. But importantly, tell us what you think of this boat. We'd love to hear your comments. So until next time, thanks very much and uh, see you afloat.